Hi everyone, this is lecture 9.1, uh, Racism and Criminal Justice. So in this uh, talk, we will be talking about uh, white privilege, we'll be talking about implicit bias, and we'll be talking about dealing with uh, privilege and implicit bias. And then in these conversations, we will use this uh, to move on to talk about uh, the criminal justice system. So, uh, what is white privilege? In recent, see, we really have to talk about this because this is a topic that has kind of infiltrated uh, our common knowledge and it's a new topic on campuses and in our society and online about privilege. And as a sociologist, as someone who combats racism, I think that's great. But it isn't always used absolutely accurately and when terms are used inaccurately um, sometimes it causes confusion and sometimes it causes a lot of things so um, it's clear to me and clear to other people that have talked about this stuff a lot that some people are a little bit less than informed and when people are a little less than informed uh, it makes everyone's life harder so I really do see it as part of uh, my job uh, to, oh, sorry, you stupid, anyway, I see it as part of my job to make sure you know what you're talking about. So, uh, privilege. Uh, privilege is defined as unearned advantages enjoyed by one group of people that are not enjoyed by other groups of people or everyone else in society. And these advantages are often rooted in historic or systemic oppression. That's what we talk about when we talk about privilege. And as you may know, there are different kinds of privileges, white privilege being one of those privileges. Typically, discussions about privilege focus on the privilege of being a member of a historically powerful group, not being a member of a historically discriminated against group. Thus, we talk about white privilege. Those are privileges uh, that benefit white people. Male privilege, heterosexual privilege, the privilege of being a member of a group that in our society has been historically powerful. In uh, her work, Unpick, Unpacking the Invisible Knapsack, uh, Dr. Peggy McIntosh was one of the first uh, people to clearly define the phenomena of white privilege and that's a, a picture of Dr. Uh, McIntosh uh, and really identify the phenomena uh, so unpacking the invisible knapsack really was a seminal work in discussions of all kinds of privilege but the first type of privilege she talks about is white privilege uh, that's not to say there are not benefits to being in historically discriminated against groups, uh, but those quote-unquote benefits are not privilege. Um, for example, it is permissible for African Americans to use the N-word in certain contexts. How not, however, this does not constitute black privilege because in those contexts when uh, people are allowed to use that word who are of African descent, it is a coping mechanism and it's often used to override the historic oppression of black people by that word, right? Black people don't use that word because they were once called that word by white people. That's not why they use the word. They use that word to override what that word what's meant, right? They use that word to if not, uh, it's usually not used to make it, you know, your own. Sometimes it is. But it's used to make it almost um, unusable by white people as an insult. And that has largely happened in our society. Uh, other examples of white privilege uh, do not operate to override anything. Um, they are merely uh, mechanisms in society. So white privilege as it, exi as it exists doesn't 
combat other things. It is simply something that white people are able to do that other people in society aren't able to do. And that's what separates what could be called black privilege, which it isn't. Black, what you could call black privilege, those are all coping mechanisms to oppression. White privilege, though, doesn't doesn't fix anything. If anything, it and it, the only things it does it hurt, is hurt people. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, uh, that's a uh, double of what I just said. White privilege doesn't override anything. Uh, important in this slide is that idea that most white people are not aware of their privilege. And they're typically not... Do most white people, including myself, I'm white, you might not know that. Um, it's done out of habit. It's done because society has always done it that way. It's done because uh, people grew up doing things like that and they don't recognize that what they're doing is part of white privilege, right? When people do things out of white privilege, they're almost never doing it because they're racist. They're doing it because they are able to, and they might not. It's almost always unintentional, which makes it really hard to fight because we don't even know we're doing it, those of us who can benefit from privilege anyway. Now, this concept of privilege is closely linked to another idea of implicit bias, um, which is this. Implicit bias is unconscious prejudices that the vast majority of individuals possess. And where does it come from? Well, when we're living our lives, when we're living in society, we have to make sense of hundreds, if not thousands of situations and patterns every single day, right? And if we can observe a pattern quickly, and that data works for us, or it explains something, then from a neurochemical, from the way our brain works, that is helpful to us. And just because a bit of knowledge is helpful to us does not mean it's um, not wrong, though, too, right? So if you learn that young black males are dangerous somehow, you will be less likely to let a young black male in your home. And... If you don't let anyone in your home, that is that will keep you from getting robbed. If you don't let young black males in your home, that will keep you from being robbed by young black males. And that is certainly racist, but you may have learned that knowledge. You have may have learned that thing along the way, and certainly... If you let a certain segment of the population out, if you don't let them in your home, that is X percent of people that will not harm you, strangers that won't harm you. Um, so it might benefit you, but it might also still be deeply racist and flawed. Now, there are many types of implicit bias. There could be implicit bias for white people over black people. So you could have a preference for white people over black people. You could also have a preference for black people over white people. It's the same mechanic in the brain. You could have a preference for men over women. You could have a preference for women over men. You could have a preference for heterosexuals over non-heterosexuals. You can also have a preference. You could prefer uh, gay people or all kinds of LGBT people over heterosexuals. It can be constructed comparing almost any group, which is a really interesting element of it, which shows us it's it's more of a deeper um, and meaningful thought process than just being a social construct of our time and place in society right now. So what that means is implicit bias has probably always been with humanity. It doesn't mean it's a good thing, but it's something that it's a phenomena that we develop. And there is good news to the end of this. Uh, don't get me wrong. So, 
this is how it works and this is really interesting uh, I will provide a, um, a link to this uh, in our uh, coursework but um, implicit bias tests you can uh, log on to a website there's a couple of them that do it uh, most of the work has been done by uh, Harvard College but so when you're taking an implicit bias test you might see either this screen or this screen um, you would see that picture of an African-American right and you are encouraged to click the thing that says good right you want to uh, you will be prompted to hit say the A button when you see something that's good and the L button when you see something that's bad and you're always encouraged to click good and this is a little confusing so but hold with me right that african-american face and then you click good okay then you will be presented with that european-american face you are also encouraged to click good right and you do both of those things well the computer then calculates how quickly you clicked good for the african-american face how quickly in microseconds it took you to click good for the white face and if you possess an implicit bias against african-americans you will be slower to click good for the black face and you will be faster to click for the European American face and vice versa. If you had an implicit bias against white people, you would be slower to click the European American face then. And this, I, I do encourage you to take one of these, take one, maybe a couple of these tests because it's fascinating and it's also terrifying, right? To see, oh my God, and you can feel it, right? Uh, I've done a couple of these and you can sometimes feel yourself being physically unable to click it as fast um, it's really fascinating research it's really amazing social science but how do we deal with this stuff because we want to deal with it because nobody wants to be racist in our society well uh, become aware of the issues right become aware of white privilege become become aware of the way that white people are privileged and if you are a white person then try to not do those things if you are a non-white person maybe if a white person does it to you let them know about it right um, you can take an implicit bias test you can figure out where your own implicit biases lie right you can figure out where your brain is wired in a way that you don't want it to be and here's the good news. I have a friend uh, that actually did a, some of this research. She worked for Ohio State studying implicit bias. And she said to me, Jeremy, there's good news to all of it. And here's the good news. If you find that you have implicit bias, which I'm sure most of you do, you can expose yourself to the exemplary characters of that group right so if you have an implicit bias against African Americans you can read for example speech speeches of Martin Luther King that you find exemplary right and when you expose yourself to members of that group that you think are really cool or really neat or really um, inspirational characters that will override your implicit bias and that sounds way too simple right that sounds almost ridiculously simple that by reading a book by a gay person you can get over your homophobia but it's true it's 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 almost sounds nonsensical but there's there's so much research behind it uh, to uh, back that up and uh, yeah I'm probably gonna give some links in uh, our course material this week uh, showing you that stuff because this is this is cutting-edge social science research and you can probably hear my voice this is really exciting stuff um, and you know we might actually be able to combat racism with this stuff or homophobia with this stuff it's really really neat stuff but before we do any of that we need to deal with the fact that yeah most of us are probably racist most of us are probably also sexist or homophobic or whatever 
And, but if we're willing to deal with it, we can be less that way and we can fix ourselves. And that's great. And that's amazing. Okay. So uh, I look forward to talking to you this week in the discussion boards. And I will uh, see you later.